Welcome to this special episode of Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and today we're talking with Steve Warnges, Global Vice President of Product Development at Mini Circuits. Welcome, Steve. Very happy to be here, Patrick. So Mini Circuits is no stranger to Frequency Matters, uh, but since you recently joined the leadership team there, maybe you can start off by telling us a little bit about how you got involved with Mini Circuits and what you've been up to since you've been there. Yeah, happy. I'm going to start, Patrick, with just a little bit of background. So um, uh, as it turns out, I'm a seasoned veteran of uh, test and measurement. I started working for the Hewlett Packard Company in the early 80s, which evolved to be Agilent Technologies, which is now Keysight, which I'm sure you're well aware. Um, and then I spent about a decade working for National Instruments as well. It's several, you know, starting out as, a, as an R&D development engineer and working up to vice president roles in, in both of those companies. And so um, it's been really good to have a chance to uh, really work on this now at Mini Circuits. So I don't know if you're aware, public, uh, Patrick, but Test Solutions has had a test and measurement product line for a long time, okay? Roughly a decade. And uh, that business has done very well over that period of time. Um, so what I was asked to come in and do initially was really take a look at that product line, try and understand what we could do to take that product line to the next level. And so I worked for you know six or eight months, really looking at, well, what is the strategy for that product line? What is the, that, that strategy yield in terms of a product roadmap? And then what does that do in terms of business results? What kind of growth for the product line does that result in? Profitability, how much do we have to spend to do that? Eventually that plan was bought, brought to the board of directors and approved. And so that's really kind of how I got involved with, with mini circuits and, and specifically the test and measurement piece to start with. But as I worked through that, I really I ended up in obviously a full-time engagement here, but I interacted with many, many of the teams worldwide with respect to mini circuits and really got the opportunity to understand and appreciate how many opportunities there were for the company to improve the business processes and drive uh, uh, growth. And so um, um, I was asked to join the, the company, which I very proudly did. And I've been working in here as the uh, global vice president of product development now for around about six months. Um, and I really enjoy uh, the smaller company and, and really the family environment. And, and I, I also believe that there's just an awesome opportunity really in two dimensions. One, to really make a difference here and to help the mini circuits business scale, really take it to the next level by bringing some more mature business ideas and business focus uh, to the company as, as, as an aggregate. So what I'm trying to do is that global VP, in addition to wearing the hat as, as really the, the EVNA program manager, I'm really trying to improve the business processes that we have around roadmap development for products, around business execution of those roadmaps and making the right choices so we make optimum use of our resources. Of course, improving development execution within product development, and then another key ingredient here is really uh, trying to improve employee engagement through the appropriate leadership of the people. So I look at all of that that um, uh, has transpired in, in a short 18 months here at uh, Mini Circuits, and I'm really, really pleased to be here. And that kind of leads us down the path. Well, you've certainly been busy, and uh, you have some exciting news today. Um, Mini Circuits is introducing for the first time a VNA into that market, which is very interesting. And uh, Mini Circuits has been known for a very long time to have a very wide selection of RF components and instruments as they've expanded into that area. But yeah. VNA seemed like a little bit of step in a new direction, which you've brought in. How did Mini Circuits decide to enter that space? Well, you know, Patrick, we've long been known for our, our quality and really our availability and really our value. As we started looking at, at that and how we wanted to really expand that business to a broader space, it was really a natural complement to consider other traditional test and measurement products. And so um, as we looked at that, eVNA or a VNA is a natural extension into those more traditional test and measurement spaces. We really plan to leverage our brand and our sales channel and our, our all of the things that customers have come to know and love about mini circuits really into this VNA space. Um, as I'm sure you're well aware, the VNA space is, is a rather large piece of test and measurement. It's over a billion dollars a year. And we really felt like there was an opportunity to serve customers 
with a, a unique, high quality, and yet affordable VNA product, something that really fit into the mini circuits overall um, mentality. And so um, we, we work to bring together a high value product that we believe can really complement uh, the users in both product development and in production verification. Um, I've been in research and development for a very long time, and you almost always have a very expensive VNA that you use. In fact, one of the things that I did is we put one of those big bicycle flags on it so that as people were using it at their desk, you could always stand up and look around and see where that thing was. And the reason for that was those very high uh, expensive VNAs were always in demand for many engineers across the development lab. I see that this is an opportunity to, to put into the market something that is obviously less, obviously less capable than the high-end VNAs, but also at a very high value or attractive price. Uh, really complementing those products that are already available from the high-end vendors and are in use in product development, but doing so with a high-quality product that yields more organizational availability of VNA capability as a whole. So as you mentioned, there are a lot of big name players in the VNAs. It's kind of the cornerstone of the microwave equipment. Uh, what value do you think the eVNA adds to customers compared to what's existing in the market today? So I've looked at this and I've obviously been those big uh, test and measurement vendors in my past. And I kind of think about it as, as the, the products in that category falling into two vendors. Clearly there's the, the big VNA vendors um, that are their market leaders. They're going to be there for a very long time. And to be honest, we're really not trying to compete with them. We're trying to compete with the, the number of, of lower end in terms of capability, typically, uh, VNAs that are USB, USB controlled. Those, those high end markets are clearly the majority and they will be for the foreseeable future. But we believe we can complement those products by, as I mentioned, additional VNA availability. Uh, for, for the traditional, you know, large R&D lab sort of environment. As we researched this, one of the other things that, that I found that I thought was rather interesting was you, you see a lot of consultants or startups or people that are wanting to get in. They'd love to be able to have the, the revenue or the money to buy a high-end VNA, but they honestly just don't have the budget. And, and when you talk to people about that, where do they go? they go to eBay and they buy, try and buy used equipment. And so I saw this as an opportunity to provide new equipment with a three-year factory warranty, with all of the accessories that you know that you're going to need in terms of, of v &A cables and those kinds of things, with the appropriate calibration kits to measurement standards, those kinds of things. We can, we at many circuits feel like we can offer a new product with a factory warranty all the accessories you need at a high value price for basically what you're paying for that used product on, on eBay. Not really knowing what you're buying because it isn't like you get to play with it first. So, you know, for the, the traditional, you know, big facilities that are doing research and development, again, the availability. For the, the lower consultant or startup, we offer a very high value product at a very, very high value price. And then the other thing that I've often seen in my experience is that people like to use a VNA in manufacturing or production. Because these are typically very expensive products, you can only, you know, you want to test and different DUTs, but with one VNA. So you have to put in place a whole bunch of switches and other, uh, you know, assorted circuitry. And what you find out is that you spend an awful lot of time making sure that you're measuring the device you're trying to test, as opposed to all the interface circuitry that's in between. Certainly that has been done and will continue to be done. But if your needs are only, you know, to six gigahertz, we really feel like you can now afford to put many VNAs on your manufacturing line instead of just having one with all that circuitry and its associated complexity. Um, you know, this product has a full capability for programmability uh, with industry standard uh, skippy commands um, to talk to it, much like you would expect in a very high-end VNA. And those are kind of industry standards. And then the last opportunity I think we see is in universities. One of the other things that this um, uh, VNA has is the ability to run without the box. So think about that in terms of the capability that you would have to just 
pull up data that you have on your P PC and analyze data taken earlier. If you're a university professor, that allows you to tell all of your students to download that user interface. And if you go look at the Mini Circuits website, one of the things you will see that we often do is we provide S parameters as a download for our products. So if you're a professor, you can say, okay, students, go download this user interface for the VNA from, from Mini Circuits. And I'd like you to understand this, this bandpass filter. Here's the Mini Circuits part I would like you to understand. They can also download those, those S parameters. They can actually pull those into the UV, into the VNA interface and make all the traditional VNA measurements with that data that we provide them. Then when they go to their, their engineering lab with the same VNA, they can actually hook up to that same device under test and look at the simulated measurements and the, the uh, familiarity they have with the user interface to real measurements made by the product. So talk about really having the ability to drive that capability home. I think this is an awesome fit for universities as well. Again, priced where it is, I think this gives university and professors a great opportunity to, to really introduce students uh, to a VNA, give them you know, runtime on one without putting at risk your $50,000, $100,000 VNA for a student that's never run one before. Now I see and, why you call it the EVNA. It makes sense. Yeah, E for for economical. You can also call it easy if you want to. So let me go into just a little bit more detail about the product itself, Patrick. So um, our VNA is a two port, six gigahertz uh, VNA controlled by a USB to the user's PC, which enables us to have a really a cheaper sales price. But it's also useful for for many other cu customer opportunities. Um, one of the things. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, uh, VNAs, one of the capabilities is something called time domain. So time domain is really what another capability that you often see in, in very high performance equipment called time domain reflectometry. Okay, Where, whereas you know they they use this in many different places, but one of the ways you use it on a PC board is you look for discontinuities in the impedance because you see reflect reflections there. So. So the, the capability that we have in the VNA with time domain is really to send a pulse down that, that um, channel that you're trying to measure and look for those discontinuities. And because of the time it takes for that signal to be reflected, you can measure in terms of distance where that discontinuity is. So if you're looking at, at a 10 inch trace with a whole bunch of bends and curves and vias and all those things that are supposed to be 50 ohms, or and or going through various parts, you can see exactly where maybe your impedance isn't matching. A very, very useful feature that is common in VNAs. Typically, this is a software option. And the, the time domain option in and of itself is typically four to five thousand dollars. So we are including that at the in the base price of this product. So not only do you get a, a very high value six gigahertz VNA for uh, $79.95, you also get time domain capability included in that. A couple other uh, interesting features that are valuable. Um, oftentimes in the VNA, you're testing an amplifier and you have to bias that amplifier. So you have to give it power. Well, one of the things that higher end VNAs also offer is biasing capability. So you can put that DC offset in the back of the VNA and we will run that into the input that we give into the device under test. So no additional um, um, connection is required. You can do all that through the VNA as well. As I mentioned, um, um, the time domain and the demo mode also is, is really, really useful. I look at all that together. I combine that with the sales and support uh, that you, you're used to getting from, from many circuits, which we will certainly include in this product offering. And I believe that we have a very compelling product in the marketplace to offer. Again, not trying to compete with those high-end VNAs. Those people have, have been doing those for an awful long time. They're very good at it, and I compliment them for it. But I think there's also a spot in the marketplace for us with this product that can make a big difference. Yeah, sounds like a great value. So Mini Circus Test Solutions line is obviously expanding into new territory. Uh, what other developments do we expect in the next coming months? 
Well, so so as I mentioned earlier on, I spent the first six months or so at this company really looking at the the, the product strategy and where we want to go with our marketplace with respect to the product line, which we call test solutions, by the way. Uh, really figuring out uh, products such as the EVNA that we could introduce, as well as additional capability for the product lines that they have. So we have a full line of, of switching, both mechanical and solid state. We have uh, also a full line of attenuation up to 50 gigahertz programmable attenuators. You can say I'd, I'd like to, to do uh, attenuation to 60 dB and, and have to be steps. Likewise, a function generator and a full line of power sensors. So when, we, when I look at those product lines and I think about that, uh, really pushing up in frequency as we look to millimeter wave and those kinds of things to 50, 60, 70 gigahertz, um, People who are trying to do switching at or attenuation at 60 gigahertz without really, really, you know, corrupting their signal is very difficult to do. And um, a lot of those art products aren't available today. So we're going to push up a lot higher into frequency where we know people are going with things such as automotive radar. Um, we know that there's there's need out there. So we're going to try and expand with our more traditional product lines up in frequency. The other product that we have right around the corner is something called a VNA extender, which is effectively an up-down converter. So you can test in that range, but down convert that frequency from 28 to 32 into a, a range that you can use a much cheaper VNA in. So instead of having to buy a, a 30 gigahertz or a 40 gigahertz VNA, I can now use my VNA extender to down convert 30, 28 to 32 to say um, two to six gigahertz. And, and um, consequently, do a lot more economical uh, test in production. Obviously, it's useful in product development and validation as well, but its primary target is in production tests. Now, this does have to be a four-port VNA, so an our VNA is a two-port, so that doesn't work. But that, too, is another product form that I think illustrates our move up into more kind of mainline test and measurement products within many circuits in terms of the spirit of growing our test solutions business. And of course, many circuits as a whole in the really the, the quest to provide our customers better value products that really meet with the brand and the preference that we've tried to establish. Well, Steve, thank you very much for uh, joining me today and uh, announcing the exciting news of your entry into the VNA market. Looks like a very good product at a very good value. And we will continue to follow the success of this in the market and maybe get an update from you down the line. Great. Thanks so much for having me, Patrick. I appreciate uh, your time as well. Well, thanks everybody for watching today and join us next time on Frequency Matters.